In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti, Amen. Ave Maria, Grazia Plana, Dominus Tecum, Benedicta Tu, Mulieribus et Benedictus Fritus Ventris Tu, Jesus, Santa Maria, Mater Dei, Ora per nobis peccatoribus nucen, Ora mortis nostrae, Amen. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti, Amen. All right, y'all, in case you didn't know, um, this week is the week of the Davos Agenda, um, also known as the conference in which the world powers plot to enslave humanity by way of a one world government. And if you think I am over exaggerating, I assure you I am not. Um, and here's the bottom line, even if all these people in this um, scheme, if you will, are well-meaning people it's still an awful idea and the reason why is because if you have a one world government it could easily be hijacked by an evil individual who will enslave the whole world see how this works so even if you know all, you're you're doing your best and you just want clean air and equality or whatever even if it could work it won't because you're taking original sin out of the equation see what I mean yeah so with that being said, let's see what they have to say. Okay, also, I'm a big believer in um, keeping your keeping tabs on your enemies to know what they are up to. Um, so with that being said, there's a, a couple groups I follow on YouTube that um, I would consider enemies of humanity. Um, number one being the World Economic Forum, headed by Mr. Klaus Schwab himself. <laughs> Um, so right off the bat, I mean, their cover photo is, like, wild. Like, first of all, why are we putting robots in the same grouping as humans? You know, the whole thing, and, like, this guy, I mean, I don't know. The whole thing is just wild. Um, whatever. But, in case you didn't know, they are having their annual how can we enslave humanity meeting also referred to as the Davos group the Davos agenda um, day one is January 25th and the propaganda coming out of this um, of this meeting or, or whatever you want to call it is phenomenal Hello and welcome everybody um, uh, my name is Philip Campbell and so I I'm gonna go over their agenda to be chairing this session Sorry, on prioritizing on. workplace mental workplace mental health okay um, so I want to start with this because they address the great reset and I've watched a couple of the videos now including the virtual press conference I believe it's all virtual this year because they're scared of the bat flu or whatever um, but usually it's held in Davos, Switzerland. Um, Switzerland is a hotbed for satanic activity. Um, but anyway, so one of the primary concerns that they that was like a reoccurring theme over and over and over again was the lack of trust um, in their great reset by the general public. They need to address that, how to gain back the trust of the public underlining so strongly that what we want to achieve uh, during our Davos Agenda Week is to rebuild trust. Um, boosting confidence in the vaccine. We are on the cusp of an era of mass COVID-19 inoculation. The deployment of vaccines by drug makers such as Pfizer-BioNTech, AstraZeneca, Moderna, Sinopharm and the Gamaleya Center promises to put the pandemic behind us. Justifiably, there's been plenty of optimism about a return to a more normal arc of life. However, it may not be a straight line to global herd immunity. Surveys indicate that only 73% of people would get a COVID-19 vaccine if available, with a number as low as 40% in some countries. It would seem that there is a lot more work to be done to help people feel comfortable enough to get a jab. Um, so basically, like they're, they they know at least they're self aware enough to know that people aren't buying this. Um, they're not buying it. So instead of I guess pretending like all is well, they're actually now coming out with these propaganda videos to address concerns and say yes, there is a global plan for a great reset, but it's not conspiratorial. It's not evil. 
have no fear. We are your friends. It's like Mars attacks when the Martians come out. I'm gonna I'm gonna splice that in here. I am the Martian ambassador. We come in peace. We come in peace. We come in peace. <laughs> It's Mars Attacks when they come out and they're like, we're your friends, we're your friends, and they start shooting everyone. Or like the pedophile, and they're probably all pedophiles anyway, but the pedophiles that hang out of the white vans and lure kids in with candy. Like, I mean, that's the level we're at here. It's ridiculous. So this is my favorite. I'm going to play this. I'm probably going to get dinged on face on uh, YouTube for copyright, but I don't care because I have no followers anyway. And it's not like my channel's monetized. So it says, the pandemic has radically changed the world as we know it. So this whole, you know, as you know, the, the whole thing is being done in the name of COVID. And the actions we take today as we work to recover will define our generation. It's why the World Economic Forum is calling for a new form of capitalism. They actually say in this video, capitalism is dead. One that puts people and planet first as we come together to rebuild the world after COVID-19. If you want to be part of the change, then tune in, turn on, and I guess get working is what it says. Um, so let's check this out because I think you're going to find it highly entertaining. Now, have the vision of Mars attacks in your head when the aliens come out and start saying we're your friends and shooting people because that's, that's the analogy we're in right now, okay? And Biden... Is the pandemic has radically changed the world as we know it, and the actions we take today as we work to recover will define our generation. Now is the time to think what history would say about this crisis. 2020 has been challenging on a lot of levels, as economic, environmental and societal frailties have been laid bare. But it's also proved that when we need to, we can act rapidly and restructure our lives. Recovery from the pandemic is an opportunity. We can see rays of hope in the form of a vaccine, but there is no vaccine for the planet. Nature needs a bailout. See how they just you never want to go back to the status quo that you had before simply because it was the status quo that got us here. With everything falling apart, we can reshape the world in ways we couldn't before. Ways that better address so many of the challenges we face. And that's why so many are calling for a great reset. A no. great reset? Maybe that great sounds more like buzzword like, bingo masking some nefarious plan for world domination. Hands up, this kind of slogan hasn't gone down well. But all we really want to say is that we all have an opportunity to build a better world. And it's not surprising that people who've been disenfranchised by a broken system and pushed even further by the pandemic will suspect global leaders of conspiracy. Right, but so... <laughs> So now it's, yes, there's a global conspiracy, but we're your friends. It's good for you. And you're just disgruntled because you've been pushed into poverty by the lockdowns that we created for a virus with a 99% survival rate. Okay. The it's like an abusive that husband. Simple. That's what it's like. Every one of us has differing priorities, values, and ideas. That's part of why solutions are so hard to come by and why we all need to be involved in the decision making. Because whether it's politicians, CEOs, academics, I mean, activists, or you, we're all about getting people together, even those you may not like, to sit down at the table and develop solutions that work for all of us. And like, what was but, that? Even people you don't like, and then it shows account suspended. Really? Because I didn't hear you talking like this, that we all need to work together when Trump was president. Right, because he wouldn't, because he put America first. Enormous trust between the private sector and the public sector for this to actually work. That trust is hard to come by. It's time for people to work together, listen to each other, and build this trust so we can move towards a better world. And we really need one. Because while the pandemic affects us all, it's clear it affects some more than others. Here we go. The first people who are hit are the people at the front, those who are vulnerable. It is those on the front line who take it first, and that is simply unacceptable. See, at the start of 2020, 1% of the world's population owned 44% of the wealth. And since the start of the pandemic, billionaires have increased theirs by more than 25%. 
whilst 150 million people fell back into extreme but poverty. All these people and going to this event are billionaires. That's what I don't understand. Like, <laughs> with climate change set to They're dwarf the rich. damage caused by the pandemic, the message from 2020 should be abundantly clear. Capitalism, as we know it, is dead. This obsession that we have had with maximizing profits for shareholders alone has led to incredible inequality and a planetary emergency. But no one can do this alone. And top-down approaches won't get us anywhere. Because everything we've learned in our work has shown us that diverse voices lead to better results. And it's for these reasons that the forum talks about something called stakeholder capitalism, which would shift businesses away from just profit. Because if we want to change where the focus of our recovery will go, then we need a new dashboard for the new economy. And that needs to encompass people, planet, prosperity and institutions. Giving people a real stake in the economy and putting well-being before growth. And that's all about getting the right people in the right place at the right time. We must rebuild our relationship with nature for the survival of the peoples and our planet. We have a window of time which is closing and we need everybody who cares to get together and find solutions now. It's the people who have great ideas and who share them with others. They're the ones who are shaping the future. So if you want to be a part of the change, then tune in, turn on, problem. and get involved. You're not Follow the Davos agenda society, right here if you don't go online. Along with, we're going to talk about it. LGB, I, I don't even know what that is. What I even means, but that's a thing now. Um, so let's go over the agenda. I mean, it's just all anti-human. It's all anti-God. It's satanic. It's satanic wrapped up in this packaging of caring for the environment and each other. And it's sick. These people are sick. These people are seriously sick. And, and look, racism and racial injustice. Floyd, really? Because I haven't heard the name George Floyd in about a year now. When did it happen? I guess last May. Yeah, it's been about six months since I've heard the name George Floyd. Did we get justice for him yet? Right. Because that's what it was about, right? And we're still burning down cities because of George Floyd, right? Right. That's what I thought. Um, there was something on here where we could see... I mean, this is... It's all about racism, racial injustice, white people are bad, um, the coronavirus is the deadliest thing ever, the climate is dying, virtual ocean, it's just all, the jobs all have to be transferred into um, global green nonsense, um, the vaccine is good. I'm looking for, uh, oh, here it is, Davos, sorry, Davos 2021. Um, it goes over all the participants. The biggest participant this year that they were very excited about in their virtual news conference was um, the president of the People's Republic, or whatever they're calling it, of China. We also know that we are faced with the three Cs, COVID, climate and cooperation, lack of cooperation. And we know that um, this year is a year where Asia takes on 50% of the global GDP. Asia has 50% of also the global population. And uh, this year, um, President Xi Jinping of uh, China will be back uh, in the Davos Agenda Week. He addressed Davos in 2017, but in addition, to um, Xi Jinping, we have the key leaders from Asia. We have Prime Minister Suga of Japan, the third largest economy in the world. We also have Prime Minister Modi from India, the largest democracy in the world. We have Pre Let's take a little side note on India because this really grinds my gears, how people think they're like this democracy and like a nation of peace um okay so violence against christians this is vatican news 
Violence against Christians increasing in India despite lockdowns. Persecution against Christians in India rose by over 40% in the first half of 2020, despite a three-month nationwide lockdown, according to an ecumenical body. Persecution Relief recently released its half-yearly report detailing acts of anti-Christian persecution in India. The data bear out of a very grim picture of religious freedom in the nation, according to the Christian ecumenical body. Hate crimes against Christians in India have risen by an alarming 40.87%, the report said. That increase came despite a complete na nationwide lockdown that lasted three months to stem the spread of COVID-19 infections. The Watchdog Group recorded 293 incidents of anti-Christian persecution in the first six months of the year. Six of those cases resulted in murder, two women were raped and killed for their faith, and another two women and a 10-year-old girl were raped for refusing to renounce Christianity. Uttar Pradesh remained the most hostile state against Christians in India, noted the report. 63 hate crimes were reported there. Police threatened one pastor with jail for him and his family if he did not forsake Christianity. Let me reread that. Police threatened one pastor with jail for him and his family if he did not forsake Christianity, according to the Persecution Relief Report. The state of Tamil Nadu reported 28 cases with a church building left burnt to the ground in June. Um, Shibu Thomas, founder of Persecution Relief, told UCA News that persecution against Christians has become increasingly common. The frightening and contagious crusade of religious nationalism and intolerance has now peaked at new inhuman altitude, said Thomas. He added that, yeah, maybe that's, um, that's the truth, isn't it? Religious now, it's more like religious globalism where we are, but he added that the data collected, and I'm not talking about Christian globalism, I'm talking about the religion of Satan globalism, but anyway, he added that the data collected is only the tip of the iceberg. We could only report, we could report only a fraction of the actual evidence perpetuated against Christians in various states. Many people do not report because they fear retribution from the tormentors and administrative machinery. Some cases in interior villages also go unreported because they are so caught off without electricity and phone connectivity. Yeah, sure seems like India is the largest democracy in the world. Give me a break. That's why they that's why they do this though. That's why they you know everything that's bad is good because for them any persecution of Christian Christendom and Christians in general and the way things used to be have to go. Um, how to save the planet, fairer economies slash communism, technology for good, oh, okay, which means censoring people that don't agree with your whatever and calling it hate speech, society and future of work, we have to make sure that gender people that don't know what gender they are can get jobs um you know why that is i'll tell you i'll give you a hint so they can get you used to anything so when they start rolling out robots to take your jobs you just go along with it that's why thank you adrian um as you mentioned uh the jobs of the future will come in part from the fourth industrial revolution from the technology sector but they will also come from the green economy from the education sector and from the care economy However, to get to those jobs of the future, there are three big areas that we need to tackle. One is where will future growth come from and how we can shape it. Two, to ensure that people have the right kinds of skills and education to be able to move into those jobs of the future. And three, to ensure that this future economy and these future jobs are fair and just and available to everybody. Those are the three big areas Except that we've been working Christian. on over the course of 2020. You'll see you're much of those wanted. conversations come together at Davos Agenda Week next week. And then much of this will continue in task forces and action groups over the course of 2021. Um, let me give you a few highlights. Um, one big aspect is the future of economic growth. We cannot simply return to growth as it existed in the past. We have to ensure that it's the kind of growth that endogenizes, that builds into it a focus on sustainability and on inclusion. We launched just last month a new vision for competitiveness, and you'll see much of that dialogue come together next week to see how practically do we get to this new kind of dashboard for the economy that looks not just at GDP numbers, but also at inclusion and sustainability targets. And over the course of the year, we'll be working with multiple economies on this. 
A second area is around skills. Last year, some of you may recall, we launched the reskilling revolution, aiming to reach 1 billion people with better skills by 2030. Over the course of the last year, we worked with 10 economies, 1,000 companies, and reached 65 million people. This is just to start, and obviously this work will be scaled in 2021, and you'll see at least three sessions that tackle this across multiple geographies <laughs> next week. And then finally, um, embedding social justice across the economy, ensuring that women have equal chances in the economic Stop. recovery, ensuring that people with disabilities, people um, of, uh, from the LGBTI Some community um, and others are included. Kids? One big okay? part of this will be a major initiative on racial justice led by business and 30 major companies will be coming together to make an announcement next week as to how they will embed racial justice, not just into their own workforces, but by using their businesses more so globally. Ridiculous. So Adrian, a few highlights there. And Because the idea is to eliminate us. I have news for you. Okay. Better business, healthy futures, beyond geopolitics. This one was quite fascinating. Um... Ready? There are 193 sovereign nations, a proliferation of regional centers of power, and one increasingly obvious fact of life. We're all in this together. The good news, when we put our minds to it, we can really get our international act together. Like when we reverse the depletion of the ozone layer. Like when we struck the Paris Accord to limit climate change. The not so good news, the scale of the challenges we face demands vastly more success stories. We need to move from geopolitics and international competition to a default of consummate global co collaboration. Nations are going to have to change. Oh. Okay. What if we don't want to change? Do we get an option? So I don't think we do. Restoring cross-border border mobility. Shaping post-pandemic policies. Greening trade. Fixing the international trade system. Resetting global politics. Vaccinating the world. From mass production to last mile delivery. Boosting Europe's green transition, resetting geopolitics option two, fixing the international trade system, building on Europe's edge in the green transition, reimagining manufacturing. I don't see a whole lot of building China's edge in the green transition. Is that not a thing? Don't they produce most of the um, pollution with all their dirty uh manufacturing and all their, their we're not going to talk about the slave mills right we're not going to talk about that we're just going to talk about europe and how it's bad and we're all racist and we are bigots and yeah right okay accelerating digital trade it, it's just it's really disgusting this whole thing is really disgusting china just gets a pass on everything right yeah, because that's the model they want to go to. The earth is getting hotter, the ice is melting, the oceans are rising. They had Greta Thornburg there. I'm pretty sure she's possessed and needs an exorcist. I'm not going to lie to you. Climate adaption for resilience, um, sustainable future. It's all, it's all, it's all it is like now you see Joe Biden and you understand where he got his policies from. They're not his policies, okay? Tech for good, huh? It's all about smart cities. Yeah, building a trustworthy and connected future. Harnessing the fourth industrial revolution. Um, I can't. Advancing digital content safety. Averting a cyber pandemic, which is really means they're going to cause a cyber pandemic. <laughs> and they're figuring out how to do it. <laughs> Shaping empowered data societies, fostering responsible AI leadership. <laughs> accelerating digital inclusion. Check this out. In accelerating digital inclusion in a post-COVID world. Yeah. Um, why, may I ask? Fostering responsible AI leadership option two. Resetting the business of data and AI in healthcare. Harnessing the fourth industrial revolution option two and on and on and on supply chains. No doubt they talk about blockchain um, technology. I'm telling you, this is 
basically this conference is not the Davos Davos agenda. It's how to slave human how to enslave humanity agenda. That's what it is. So you can see for yourself, go to WeForum or weforum.org and you can read all this fun stuff. But I just thought I would give everybody a heads up on the evil plots and the evil conspiracies. Um because make no mistake about it, they are not our friends. And it totally is an evil conspiracy. To them, it might not seem evil, okay? They might not even know they're doing anything wrong. But the fact of the matter is, the idea is to destroy Christendom. I mean, that's the whole idea. The whole idea is to kick God out. We can do it ourselves. We don't need God to tell us what our gender is. We don't need God to tell us, um, you know, how to treat each other or whatever we can do all that ourselves only we can't and apparently we just can't seem to figure that out so okay that's all I gotta say um have a great night everyone Joan of Arc Media out